We know that Iran has breached some technical elements of the nuclear deal, of course. So can we expect continued support from the parties that actually remain to this particular agreement? Yeah, I think there are a few important things that um, uh, EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini said. And one of that was that uh, these steps are uh, do not constitute a significant breach and they're also reversible. Um, so, you know, what we also have to see is that the European nations that remain in the part uh, in the in the deal just this week said as well something that was very important, which was that um, they will not seek to trigger a dispute mechanism that's allowed as part of the deal itself. Uh, uh, which would in effect um, uh, would have meant that you know it would lead to uh, possible more uh, European Union and, and UN sanctions and in effect escalate the matter. So this is not what they're going to be doing, uh, meaning that they're going to really try to see how they can temper the, uh, the tensions and find diplomatic solutions. What is your conclusion in terms of Iran reducing their compliance with the deal? Is it saber rattling to the United States of America? Is it to invoke more pressure on the European peers to help them ultimately, ultimately to shift more oil? That's really interesting, actually, Manus, because I think a lot of the critics have been seeing this as perhaps, you know, uh, Iran's uh, mad dash towards a bomb. But uh, Iran has a strategy there, and it should rather be seen, just as you mentioned, uh, more as a way to gain leverage and, and you know, kind of okay. poke and push uh, the, the remaining parties, so the three European nations and Russia and China, to try to come up uh, with solutions uh, to ensure that Iran can continue having some benefit from that deal despite the U.S. sanctions that are targeting pretty much every major sector of its economy.